Auzubillahiminashshaitanirrajim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, welcome to the lecture of managerial economics. Today we will discuss the market structure. The terminology of the market, the term market is a, a very common uh, term uh, which is uh, not only used in the uh, economic circles but also uh, it is used by the uh, general public almost uh, in our daily life we often hear about the market so and let us define what market is uh, in terms of economics market is uh, a set of conditions in which buyers and sellers meet each other for the purpose of exchange of goods and services for money so this means that market is a set of conditions, market is a situation, market is a place, uh, market is, is a provision in which we see that uh, different uh, buyers and sellers, they meet each other, they are present there uh, and their aim is to exchange the goods and services for money. So it means that it is a public place where provisions are made for sale. Similarly, another definition of uh, the market is that a market is an arrangement that provides opportunity for exchanging goods and services for money or money's worth. A market consists of all potential consumers sharing a particular product, a uh, particular need or want who might be willing and able to engage in exchange to satisfy their needs or want. So in short, we can say that market is a situation, market is a provision, market is a place in which uh, the different buyers and sellers, they come, they meet and they exchange goods and services for the sake of money. So. As we discussed in the previous slide, dear students, three things are necessary for a market. Uh, going back to the slide, here we discussed that uh, market is a situation, market is a provision, it is a place where buyers and sellers meet each other for the purpose of exchange of goods and services for money. Let us take a simple example from the uh, recent uh, Eid al-Adha. You may have gone to the animal market, Mandi, Mal Mandi, where there were buyers and sellers, there were animals, and Mandi was a place, a provision for the exchange of these, these animals. Because you went there as a buyer and you were search, in a search of a seller whose animal you like the most and the agreed one so far the price is concerned. So this means that there were in that animal market there were you were the buyer and there was a seller as well. So buyers and sellers the product, the product there whose sale was carried out, there were the animals, goats, sheep, cows, uh, ox, oxes, etc. So, this means that there are three things are necessary for the existence of the market, and these uh, uh, are called the essentials of market, and these include the goods and services to be exchanged, buyers and sellers and place and region and then particular particular case uh, of either as mandi the words were the animals you were the buyer and there was as well and uh, the place was the mandi so they these are the essentials of a market classification of markets Dear students, we can classify markets uh, according to time, according to location and according to competition. 
First of all, we discuss uh, markets according to time. We can say time classification of the market. Among the uh, time classification of the markets, we first discuss the short period market. Now, what is short period market? Short period markets are for highly perishable goods of all kinds. Such type of a market is for a very short period of time. The markets where goods of daily requirements are exchanged, it is known as very short period market as well. And only mostly perishable goods are uh, sold in the daily short period market like vegetables, like meat, like fruits, milk, eggs, etc. Long period market, uh, long period markets are for durable goods of different vari uh, varieties may be produced or manufactured. Unlike the uh, short period market, long period market is uh, for the durable goods. Short period market is for perishable goods and the long period market is for the durable goods. Durable goods are those goods whose life is more, who, 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 which can be used for a longer period of time for years. Long period market provides sufficient time to adjust the demand of customers for products. If the demand increases, there is enough time uh, to meet uh, the, 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 to, that uh, may provide an opportunity for the suppliers to supply the goods in order to meet that demand. The price in such type of market is uh, determined on the basis of demand and supply. According to the location, the markets can also be uh, classified on the basis of uh, the location. We can have the uh, local market. Local markets can confined to locally uh, locality, mostly dealing with perishable and semi-perishable goods like fish, flowers, vegetables, eggs, milk, and others. Local uh, local markets uh, they are mostly. Uh, for the perishable goods and semi-perishable goods and they are really for the short period of time uh, like uh, fish, flowers, vegetables, eggs and uh, meal etc. So, regional, market, regional markets cover a wider area, maybe a district, a state, a province or interstate dealing in durables both consumer and non-durables and uh, uh, industrial products including agriculture produce that so far so if you take the example of uh, our country the regional market can be uh, a province trade within a province trade in a division for example we can say that there are six or seven uh, or eight uh, six seven districts or eight districts in uh, a particular division, let's say the Malakan division, then this means that uh, that is a Malakan region. Regional market are mostly up to the lo uh, locality, uh, a particular region. The third type, uh, according to the lo uh, location, uh, is the national market. This is very clear from the title of this type of the market that such type of market uh, covered uh, the national boundaries dealing in durables and non-durable consumer goods, industrial goods, matters, forest products, agriculture products. Means of trade within the state, trade within a country, exchange of goods within a country, the whole country is a national market. The next type of uh, the market according to the location is uh, international market. In case of uh, world or international market, the movement of goods is uh, widespread throughout the world, making it as a single market. 
As we see, as we hear, we say that world is a global village. World is becoming a global village. So trade across this village is known as international market. Markets according to the competition, the third type of the classification is uh, the classification of the markets according to the competition. We have many uh, types of the mar uh, market according to the competition, but uh, at your level, at your uh, course level, we will discuss on the three markets perfect competition, monopoly and monopolistic competition. So let us discuss the, uh, these markets according to the competition one by one. First we come to the perfect competition. So dear student, perfect competition is a market situation in which there are a large number of buyers and sellers buying and selling a homogeneous part with perfect knowledge of the market in the absence of artificial restrictions with free entry and exit of the phone. Dear students, perfect competition is an extreme type of the competition and uh, this is um, uh, it is a market situation in which we see a large number of buyers and sellers and they deal in uh, buying and uh, they deal in a homogeneous product and they have perfect, both the buyers and sellers have perfect knowledge of the market. Uh, there are no artificial restrictions and uh, the firms are allowed to enter or exit of the market. This means that it is an extreme type of the competition. The second type of uh, the, uh, the, another definition of the perfect competition is that uh, it is a market uh, in which the number of buyers and sellers is very large. All are engaged in buying and selling a homogeneous product without any artificial restrictions and possessing perfect knowledge of the market at a time. Let us discuss the characteristics or assumptions of perfect competition. Some people call it conditions of the perfect competition. The first one, assumption, the first condition for the existence of perfect competition is the large number of buyers and sellers. So, dear student, there are large number of buyers and sellers in the perfect competition, such that no buyer or seller is able to affect the market price. So, all the it is because all the buyers and sellers have perfect knowledge of the market, so the market, the price which prevails in the market is a single price or a fixed price. Product is homogeneous. The product sold by all firms is homogeneous and the consumer cannot differentiate the product of one from the other. Unlike the monopolistic competition where differentiated product is sold, the product in case of the perfect competition is homogeneous. And uh, the consumers cannot differentiate the product of one firm from the product of the other firm. Another condition and the assumption of the perfect competition is the perfect knowledge of the market. So, dear students, we assume that uh, all the buyers and sellers, they have perfect knowledge of the market. So no single seller can uh, raise the price but accept the market price. Free entry and exit of the firm, there is a freedom of entry and exit of, for the firms. Suppose the market is not going well, if some of the firms are making losses, then they are allowed to exit the market. If there is boom in the economy and uh, most of the firms are making super normal profit, so the new interested firm can enter the market. No artificial restrictions, so there will be no government intervention in the market. There are no floor pricing, ceiling pricing, 
and uh, no comment rise in the market. Perfect mobility affects the production. The effects of production are allowed to move from one place to another. Monopoly. The word monopoly has been derived from the combination of two words, mono and poly. Mono means single and poly to control. This means the control controlled by a single person. Monopoly refers to a market situation in which there is uh, only one seller of a commodity and this, this commodity has no close substitute. So the monopoly can be defined as a market situation in which there is a single seller or producer of a product which has no close substitute. So there is a single producer or seller and the product has no close substitute. In case of Pakistan, Pakistan Railway, uh, Sui Gas, SNGPL. Now the question arises why there is monopoly? What are the reasons for monopoly? Why monopolies are established? So one of the reasons is ownership of essential raw material. If a big firm owns all the reservoirs, all the ores of a particular raw material, it is expected that it will have a monopoly of that, uh, over that uh, particular commodity. For example, for a longer period of time in South Africa, DBS, the diamond company, they owned all reservoirs of the diamonds and they had monopoly over the diamond market in the South Africa. In Pakistan, the uranium reservoirs and all the uh, radioactive elements, they are owned by the, the reservoirs of the uranium uh, and uh, other uh, metals which are used in the production of the uh, nuclear energy are owned by the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. So PAEC has complete monopoly over the uh, uh, nuclear products. Patent trend research. In the large organizations, especially in the multinationals, there are research wings. They carry out research continuously. So if they are able to develop a product, a research product, they have the monopoly uh, over this product for a certain period of time. Uh, it is, it is, uh, mm, they, 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 they will have no competition and they will be the monopolist. State ownership. Sometimes the state owns certain industries, certain enterprises uh, in which heavy investment is required. So uh, they, uh, as heavy investment is required in that and private sector is shy to invest in it. So they don't have much competition or most of the market is covered by such type of the industries. So the monopoly is established. Public utilities. Sometimes the government in order to provide uh, the public utilities at reasonable prices uh, establish corporations or organizations uh, which uh, become monopolist in the provision of that particular public utilities. Economies of scale. Sometimes uh, the due to the large scale production, the cost of uh, the production is very high and uh, more firms, the, uh, most of the firms, they shy to invest in such type of industries and uh, this leads to the establishment of monopoly. And the last reason is the unfair competition. If some firms join and uh, for the purpose of increase of their sales and profit uh, and uh, they adopt common policies, uh, then uh, if merger takes place in such type of situation also, the monopolies are established. So dear students, we discussed two types of the uh, market perfect competition and monopoly. So let us discuss the difference between perfect competition and monopoly. So in perfect competition, there are a large number of sellers, while in a monopoly, there is a single seller or producer. This is the first difference. 
In perfect competition, there is free entry and exit of firm, while in the monopoly, there, is, there are barriers to entry. Number three, the firm is price taker in perfect competition, while in the monopoly, it is price setter. Number four, same price prevails in the market, while there can be price discrimination in the case of monopoly. Number fifth, there are many firms in the industry, while in a monopoly, there is a single firm which is a whole industry. Perfect competition, the firms earn normal profit in the long run, while in the monopoly, super normal profit is earned in the long run. Demand curve is parallel to x-axis, average revenue curve is parallel to x-axis, we will discuss in the coming lecture, while in case of the monopoly, it is downward sloping. The third type of uh, the competition is a monopolistic competition. Until 1933, market analysis was studied under two extremes, perfect competition and monopoly. But in 1933, the concept of monopolistic competition was introduced. Monopolistic competition is a market situation in which there are many sellers of a product, but the product is in some way depreciated. So, dear students, before 1933, there were, the market was studied under two extremes. On one side, there was extreme competition, the perfect competition, while on the other side, there, are, there was no competition, the monopoly. So, uh, the, 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 in 1933, the concept of monopolistic competition was introduced, which stands midway between the monopoly and the perfect competition. It is a monopoly as well as a competition. Fairly large number of sellers is the first characteristic of the uh, perfect competition and the second is the differentiation or differentiated product. In perfect comp monopolistic competition, the product is differentiated and uh, the differentiation is making, made through packing, trademarks or quality. Suppose we uh, talk about the, suppose we talk about the we talk about uh, the soap market in Pakistan we have um, Rexona we have Lux we have Dow etc all these uh, have their own potential customers and they all have, they are small monopolies. So it is an example of the monopolistic competition. The, 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 there is advertisement very common and uh, the, 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 the products are differentiated through the advertisement, through the publicity. And uh, natural demand curve, the demand curve in case of perfect competition is downward sloping uh, from left to right, just like the monopoly free and exit. And uh, in monopolistic competition, two new firms can enter the market. Dear students, for detail, you can uh, refer to these websites. Thank you very much.